Hello everyone, I'm Neverdot. Welcome to my channel. Today we're talking about enamel pins, but specifically designing the vectors for those. Uh, turning your 2D drawing into the vector form that it often needs to be for the manufacturers to produce your pins. Well, let's go. All right, so I've already got a pin design designed. Uh, so we're gonna take you through the steps of turning that into the vector. So I'm gonna start with the sketch. Bam, there's a sketch, I already did it. We're gonna skip the actual drawing part of the thing. Uh, so we've got the mushroom here. Uh, this is Anita the mushroom, she's having a bubble tea. Uh, this is one of my next pins that's coming out this year, uh, hopefully soon. And we've got the sketch. So um, one of the important things to save a lot of time uh, when doing the vector is bear in mind that you're gonna be taking this drawing and tracing it in Illustrator. Not you, Illustrator is gonna be tracing it, but uh, a lot of things that can trip up tracing is hard edges. So intersections that should be clean and crisp, you want them going over each other like that. Illustrator might not know that it's supposed to be a hard edge. Uh, a, a good way to save that effort of having to pinch off those corners and remove points and everything is just to make sure you don't have those intersections in your file in the first place. It's very good at doing a straight line. It's not as good as doing those intersections. It's not bad, I mean, it's not perfect. And I found a way to avoid that entirely. So when you're drawing, just don't intersect your lines, ever. I mean, you can, but assume the ones that are intersecting in your drawing might get a little bit smoothed out. Uh, so hopefully don't care about those ones. So I'm gonna draw the body of my mushroom on a layer, because we're in Krita. Uh, Photoshop would be the same, or any other drawing program that has layers. If it doesn't have layers, then why are you using it? So then on a separate layer, I'm gonna do the head and the little foot. Uh, these are the other two other parts that intersect. Uh, you'll see here, I haven't even cleaned up the lines, I don't care, uh, they're separate layers. I'll clean that up in um, Illustrator actually. And then I'll put little spots on the little Anita here. And then lastly, I'm just gonna indicate which colors I want to fill in later. Uh, one thing I'm not gonna draw here is the cup. Uh, the cup I'm specifically not gonna hand draw because the hand drawing, as great as it is, um, the cup is a, a manufactured item and it should be perfect. And I'm a perfectionist and I'm bothered by wiggly lines, things that are bent a little bit that shouldn't be bent. Uh, for a mushroom, that's fine. The mushroom is an organic thing and it should have bumps and curves and imperfections and that's, that's great. It gives a character. But a bubble tea cup is a manufactured item and if that warps at all, that's not good. I don't, I don't want that. And that's going to bother me because this is going to be molded into metal a lot of times. Uh, and I want to sell it. And I want to have it myself. I just want to own these, actually. That's my excuse. You guys buying it is like a bonus. I just want the pin myself. So I want this to be perfect. So I'm going to save that and just do it up in Illustrator. A lot of you probably do pins uh, directly in Illustrator. So you might skip this step entirely where you're drawing. Uh, but definitely... If I have a particularly, a shape that lends itself to being done in Illustrator directly better than tracing and drawing it, I'll do it in Illustrator. So we're gonna save the cup for there. Um, and just a point about drawing as well, if you're doing drawing in physical media or you're considering doing a sort of an artsy drawing with a, a different brush that's more textured, or you're drawing in pencil or something, or pencil crayon or chalk, uh, don't. Make sure you produce very smooth lines that are very sharp because you want a black and white image, not shades of gray, because that doesn't translate very well on the, tra on the tracing side and it's certainly hard to make into a pin. Uh, so pins don't reflect uh, textured lines, so don't do that. You're gonna have a hard time. Uh, so we're gonna assume that you're gonna have nice crisp black lines like you see here, and let's take it into Illustrator. All right, so we're gonna bring the Photoshop file into Illustrator. Ah, it's massive. When I draw my drawings, I draw them much too big. Um, this one is 4,000 by 4,000 pixels, and it's only gonna be like three centimeters in size for a, for a pin. Actually, a piece of it's two centimeters. About three, maybe, two and a half, something like that. So I do kind of recommend drawing them larger. The larger you draw them, the easier it is to fix the vector mistakes. Because the tracing is as accurate as it is, but it can do a better job if it has a larger image to work with. If you have a very small low-res image, 
you might have a lot of cleanup work to do because it's going to have a harder time judging the hard corners and everything. Uh, but here we have, I've brought in everything, including, very importantly, including the sketch. Because while I'm not going to be tracing the sketch, I do kind of need it. I'm going to have to embed it because uh, I'm going to need to disassemble it. Make sure you preserve the layers. And let's get rid of that. I'm in an older version of Illustrator because I've got the version before they started charging monthly, so that's great. I don't have to pay for the thing every single month. Uh, but it might have some missing features that you have in your newer version, so just bear with it, I guess. So bear with me. Uh, apologies for that. And the features are probably generally the same. I don't think they're worth taking out the live tracing. <laughs> uh, so we're going to lock the sketch layer because I don't want to be messing around with it. I'm also going to hide that palette here. I don't want to see it. Uh, so we have three layers now, uh, we're just going to trace them. So tracing is a method in Illustrator where it will turn something like these black lines into live trace and turn it into a vector. And since we have a nice black and white thing, uh, we'll be fine. You can go into the tracing options and maybe tweak it, especially if you don't have a particularly clean image that you're working off of. Um, I'm picking black and white because it is black and white. Uh, do not want it producing additional colors. That's very important because we're producing a single shape. We don't want a bunch of extra garbage on the edge to clean up uh, if we were doing grayscale. Uh, so don't pick grayscale, don't pick color. Uh, just go with black and white. Really, the other settings are pretty good. Uh, if you get bad results, of course, tweak them. You might get more familiar with it, but I've never really had much problems. But I'm also drawing at a very large resolution, so that might contribute towards my success here. Uh, so I'm just going to leave it and typically when I do this I just go to live trace, uh, make and expand because I want it expanded immediately. Expanding is where it makes it sort of permanent and I get that. It's produced the black line but also the white uh, surrounding so I'm going to select those white sections and delete them. I do not want them and I'm going to do the same thing with these other two layers. So let's go in here, trace, make it expand clean up and delete the empties oh. and then also do this last one uh, life race make it expand all right that one's probably got a lot of this, all these circles do, do, do. delete all right uh, i do not need these all to be in their own separate things learning the shortcut keys definitely helps uh, oh i don't need that back then. let's get rid of that Get rid of all layers you don't need. Uh, so here we've got our mushroom. Uh, as you see, got some overlapping stuff. So the next tool here that we'll use a lot is this one, the Shape Builder tool. So go into that, hold down the Alt key, start trimming off. Well, for me, trimming off. You, you probably were smarter than me and didn't bother including that kind of excess uh, paths. Uh, so now I've got the clean edge, I'm missing the cup entirely. Uh, let's just flatten that in the Pathfinder. We'll just merge all those shapes into one single shape. Boop. And you'll notice since they were separate shapes on separate layers, these intersections are perfect. They're hit right on. They're, they're not bent and smoothed over because you couldn't figure that out. No, they're perfect joining up. Oh, that grammar wasn't good. So at this point, you would just go through it have a look through it. Oh, there's a bit of a bulge here that I don't know that I like. And, but it, it's actually pretty good. Like here, I did... Oh, yeah, actually, yeah, I did separate that out. <laughs> so this all looks pretty good. I would fix a couple things up. Like here, it gets a little bit thin. That was my drawing, actually. That was a bit too thin. Uh, so you just go into your, your little vector tool, and you might little tweak it a bit. Whoop. And just make it look a little bit more, you know consistent as far as the line thickness. It's not necessary. Uh, maybe you like that look. Uh, it's not going to mess up your pin at all. Uh, certainly the, the thicknesses of these lines can be different and there's certain minimums. There's not really a maximum though. If you want that whole thing to be metal, uh, that's up to you. Uh, anyways, I won't belabor this because I've already cleaned it up elsewhere. And uh, We're not going to go through the steps of creating that cut. That's just normal vector work. I have another a uh, completed thing somewhere here, I think. Oop, oop. So let's get rid of that. All right, so here it is with the cup 
inserted and done as just ovals and stuff, ovals and lines and circles. So this is the bubble tea. And I've just put it in, so it's all good. And I've made sure that these lines, the, the vector lines that I drew in Illustrator, uh, match the thickness of my hand-drawn lines. Uh, and when I was doing the drawing in the art program, Krita in this case, I was trying to make sure my I was pressing on the pen sort of hard. I was not trying to get a variance in the line thickness, because again, I don't really want that. Um, the, the pins, when they're in metal, I feel like they're a little bit better if the line thicknesses are consistent all the way through. And while that is hand-drawn, you don't notice really uh, the slight variations in thickness. At least when I do it, I'm trying to push a little bit harder on the pen so I don't get the, the soft edges here and there, unless that's part of the style of the pin. One of my pins that I'm doing does actually involve a thinning of the line, but that's because it's a plant and it has little plant veins. So the next step is possibly not needed, but I do it, it's to fill in the colors. And that seems like an obvious step you would want to do. Uh, you could probably just say, this is blue, this is green, this is red, providing the Pantone numbers and whatnot. Uh, but I like to see it myself because I want to gauge if those are the right colors. Uh, so a quick way that I do it, and there's probably a better way to do this, uh, I'm gonna just put in, let's say a color here, stick it in the background. I'm gonna need to grab my metal layer it. Yeah, that's okay. Make a few copies of it because I don't want to accidentally lose it. Only show one of them. I'm also going to uh, maybe copy this a few times. Uh, okay. That's probably too many. So select the metal layer, which is the outline. Might be a bunch of layers actually. I've grouped them together. And also select that background color. The background color doesn't matter what color it is. It's just we're just trying to get the shape. So we're trying to create a shape of the interior. So again, go back to your shape builder tool, this thing, boop, which is also, I think, shift M, and then kill off that back. And also holding the alt key down, uh, get rid of the metal. So click off that metal, metal, zoom in, get rid of that. Da, 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 da. We're just gonna get rid of all these little things, try not to click on that thing messed it up <laughs> you <laughs> all right so now I've got not the color separated but I've got the color layer yeah actually I didn't need these things Oop. let's get rid of those all right so you and it actually it's already split them up a little bit so this is good that's the head and then we've got and the head I can now start if I bring up my swatch Color box, Pantone, solid coated. All right, here you are. Let's see, you're gonna be like red. That's good. These guys, the, the spots. Oh, see. You're probably gonna have this. Uh, is you need to split up these things, so I'm just gonna duplicate the head. There we go. And then go back into the shape builder. Take out the dot on that, flip back to the copy, take out the head on this one. There we go. Now I've got my, my dot separated out so I can select my spots, group them together, make them... Spots are white, I think. That's going to be hard to see on the background, but whatever. I should probably turn back on the metal. There we go. I can actually see now. The metal is going to be maybe something like that. Because uh, the metal's not black, helps to color it. Uh, sort of what it should be. That's a little bit darker than it should actually be. Here we have the body. The body's going to be, it's a mushroom, so it, the body and the foot are both kind of white. Cup here. I don't know. So you can fill in your Pantone colors as you see fit. And T is, let's say, pink. All right, so we've got it colored in. All these separate layers are separated out. Uh, when you provide it to the manufacturer, they will then have a very good image of what it is. And I would also, when sending it off to the factory, and this is separate from doing the vectors, but of course, you know, record what pen tones you're using. Of course, it's in the file, they can see it, but I typically like to list it out, specifically pen tone number, whatever, uh, just in case, because I don't trust anybody to do things correctly. <laughs> so if I can produce the same information seven times on the same file, and they all agree, 
then it's good. Then at least it's not my fault if they mess it up. Although I have to prove it. I always check your proofs. Don't assume anything's correct. So these are the steps I take in turning a hand drawing into a vector. The steps I take to save time is to keep the layers separate when you're drawing it. So when you do the tracing, it's not doing some unnecessary merges with those hard corners. It keeps it nice and sharp if you keep them as separate layers. It's much easier to clean that up in Illustrator than to clean it up in Illustrator when it's got it merged uh, in the first place. Um, yeah, and just keep your strokes in the same thickness. Uh, be familiar with Illustrator, like if you don't know Illustrator, definitely learn how to use it. Uh, make sure you know how to use you know, the pen tool, uh, the adjustments, uh, Bezier's, whatnot. Because uh, oftentimes, yeah, you'll, you'll need to go in here and fix some of the line thicknesses. Hey, I didn't have to fix that because I erased it because there's a cup in the way. Uh, so yeah, make sure you know your tool. Uh, but it's fairly easy to get it into vector form. And really, a lot of the, if you're working with any middlemen for doing your pins, they'll do this for you. You don't have to do it. <laughs> uh, but me as an artist, I want to have these skills. I want to be able to do this myself because uh, I'm a perfectionist and I don't trust anybody. So I want to get this perfect myself and be fully to blame if it's wrong. So thank you for watching and I'm going to get out of here and do the outro. See you soon. So I hope this helps you. I hope you figure out better how to do it. And if you don't know how to use the Bezier tool curve and stuff like that, that's something that's documented very well online. Please look up those tutorials if you don't know how to use those individual tools. Uh, but this assumes a basic knowledge of how to use Illustrator and not so much gonna teach that, sorry about that. Uh, so good luck with your pins. And when I get those pins in the mail, really excited for the mushroom pin actually boba tea finally i really wanted a mushroom pin anyways thank you guys for watching i'll see you guys next time something interesting about the next pin set we've got anita jenny and agent kite and you haven't met agent kite much yet uh she's been in the comics a few times but they're all girls and it's the first all girl pin set and it's fair all the previous pins were pretty much boys. That's six pins. And this pin does have two girls, Piana and Petrus, but Peter's in there too, so not, it's mixed. It's a, they're, a, they're a family, they, they're a piece in a pot. They're always together. But first female pin set. So looking forward to that, very excited. And finally, maybe Trevor will find a girlfriend. Thank you everyone for watching this video. I really appreciate it. I'm a tiny channel so all of your help and support and comments have been immensely helpful and encouraging me to continue doing this and I do appreciate uh, the interest in the pins and I do love making the pins so keep coming back and I hope you check out my new pins when they get in. See you next time. Bye.